Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Revelation, chapter 2. Book of Revelation, chapter 2. We're going to look at two verses today. Verses 4 and 5. Revelation, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. The title message is First Love, First Love. Revelation, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Again, the title of the message is First Love. The Bible says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Brother Kelvin, can you pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Uh, please forgive us of our sins so yes. that you can hear our prayers. Lord, I just wanted to um, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for us while we're still sinners, Lord. Yeah. And thank you for our salvation, Lord. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the King James Bible. Um, Lord, thank you for the pastors that uh, you prepare for us Amen. to teach the words to us, Lord. We pray that you fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Give him the wisdom and speak to us through him, Lord. Uh, give us the wisdom to understand your word, Lord. And uh, Pastor Jay is going to teach us about first love, Lord. Um, and I just uh, pray that you bless this message. And Lord, I just uh, if I could pray for the people of Ukraine, Lord. We know that they're on the brink of war. And I just pray that you have mercy on the souls that are in that country, Lord. And for so many countless others in the world that are still not safe, Lord. Lord, all these wars and rumors of wars, um, volcanoes and earthquakes, Lord, uh, you told us that when these things are happening, Lord, look up for our um, redemption draws near, Lord. And although we look forward to your soon return, Lord, we have our hearts to those lost souls, especially those of us who uh, have lost um, friends and families, close mm -hmm. ones that are still not saved, Lord. Please have mercy on them. Yes. And uh, Lord, just uh, wanted to thank you again that we get to come here and fellowship and praise you and we get to still share the gospel. Thank you so much for that. And we pray all the above in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First love. As you know, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And you think about first love. I mean, in human relationship, you do remember first love. And it's, uh, it could be a good thing or bad thing. But when it comes to you know, your first love, Lord Jesus Christ, and that's something that's eternal, and that's something that should be on your heart, dear to your heart, not just you know, Valentine's Day reminder. It should be all the time. Do you remember the time when you got first saved? Remember, you only get saved once. So you, you remember that moment. And how happy were you? I mean, how elated and how glad you were because you were passed from death unto life and that you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And, you know, it's that joy that only, you know, salvation can bring. And that love translated into what? You had love for the Word of God and you wanted all the people that are around you in your life to get saved. I mean, that's probably the common, you know, first love experience everyone has had. Because when I first got saved, you know, I was going to church, you know, just secular church, following, you know, charismatic stuff. Never had the assurance of salvation, you know, the sinner's prayer every single week. And, you know, you have some bad days and you think, oh, am I really going to heaven unless, you know, I repent of my sins. But when I found out the truth, you know, through the King James Bible, and someone showed me from the Word of God exactly how to get saved, man, you know, that joy I still won't forget and can't forget. You know, back in 98, April, that's when I got saved for sure, right? I'm pretty sure all of you guys have, you know, though that, at least that time when you got saved. I mean, can you, you might forget your first love, like when you first, you know, knew that person or talk to that person or had relationship with that person, but you remember the time. You remember around when, right? When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you should at least remember when that was, yes. right? If you say, 
you know what? You know, I, I have no recollection, but I'm saved. I know, there's a, you know, there's, that's questionable, right? If, if you truly realize that you were a sinner on your way to hell and you trusted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you might not know the date, but you ought to remember the time, right? But if you don't, then maybe, you know, you have to have talk with me or one of the, you know, brethren yes. to make sure that you know where you're going after you die. Then the question is, do you even realize and do you even have that first love? If you were to die right now, do you know for sure 100% you go to heaven? Now, I didn't say you think, you know, do you know for sure 100% you, you go to heaven, right? right? And it's not something that, you know, some people say, oh, you and I will never know, right, until the day of death. No, that's a lie. Right. Yeah. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. So in order for you to really know about that first love, for some, they have never had the first love. So there's no point of you leaving the first love because you never had it in the first place. But for those who had first love, who experienced that first love, it's time for you to come back. First John chapter 5, verse 13. Let's start with verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son has life, and he that hath not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. What does the Bible say? The Bible say, you may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. Then question becomes, if you were to die right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven? If your answer is not amen, yes, 100%, then something is wrong. Yes. Either you're not saved or you're backslidden and you don't have assurance of salvation. One or the other. If you were not grounded in the right doctrine, then you will always question your salvation. Why? Because you just don't know. You don't know about certain doctrines, right? Like circumcision of Christ. You don't know about body, soul, and spirit. Obviously, then, when you commit sin and when you have a bad day, and you don't have a chance to confess your sin and repent to God, you're going to be worried. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and you remember all the sins that you've committed. Doctor gave you a final sentence that you're going to die within one week. And then you're remembering all the things that you've done you know, wrong in your life. When you disobeyed your parents when you were little, when you were bad to your spouses and your families, right? And all the time that you lied, all the time that you committed, you know, lustful thoughts, and everything else goes through your head. And you're like, man, I, don't, I only have one week to, you know, ask God for forgiveness for every single sin, you know? And that's how I could be sure. No, that doesn't work that way. You and I have a puny brain, you know? We have a, ours is a little bit bigger than animals, but it's still not big, right? You know, especially in the sight of an almighty God, you know, we're like less than nothing. How do you think that you could remember every single sin that you've ever committed? I mean, if you could, tell me, right? Maybe, you know, you could write a book, you know, and become bestseller, but we can't. That's why you need to know for sure that your soul is safe from hell once and for all. And quickly rewinding, how did you, you know, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? I mean, that's a question that everyone should ask yes. and reaffirm and verify because last thing you ever want to do is that you think that you had that first love and then you wake up in the white throne judgment, Woo! right? You don't want to be waking up in the white throne judgment, no. right? As a Christian, you want to be waking up at the judgment seat of Christ, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you'll still face the terror of the Lord, but you're not going to burn in hell. Okay. Then, what, then you have to remember, when I accepted Christ, first remember when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, did I really know that I was a sinner on my way to hell? Because Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, in Romans 
you know, same chapter, verse 23. Did you realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell? Because you were a sinner, you couldn't get to the glory of God, right? right? I mean, a lot of times, kids get confused, you know. Some kids don't know what sin is, and they're not going to be held accountable for that, right? right? right. But if that four-year-old, five-year-old know what sin is, you know, good and evil, then they're accountable. Yes. Then when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, did you know that you were a sinner on your way to hell? Because the Bible says in Romans 5, 23, for the wages of sin is death. You know, a lot of people ask this question, philosophical question. What is death? What, if, what happens to a human being after they die? Right? Why do people die in the first place? The Bible has the clear answer. Amen. I mean, Romans 5, 23, for the wages of sin is death. Yes. You die, I die because of sin. That's right. Because we're born as a sinner. Amen. And there's a big difference when people say, I go to hell because I committed sin. No, you go to hell because you're born as a that's sinner. Right. See, you and I, so that's why everybody, essentially, you only have one choice. You could either accept Christ and go to heaven or reject him because you're already on your way to hell. You have no choice of going to heaven or hell. I mean, you're already on your way to hell. I was on my way to hell. So it's not up to you to decide, you know, I'm going to go to hell. No, you're already headed there, right? You know, you're headed there. So, you know, no one needs to print out a, you know, ticket to hell for you. Because when you're born into this world, you're on your way to hell. Yes. Just like me. That's why God actually lists people who's going to burn in hell in the book of Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 21. Yeah. Revelation chapter 21. And it is a good thing for you and I to be reminded Amen. of the time when we got saved. I mean, when you were saved, think about the state that you were in. You might be a young child. You might have been the older man, young lady, older lady. Maybe you were in a different situation. However, one thing's for sure that you were saved from eternal lake of fire. Thank you. you know, I mean, think about it. You were supposed to burn in hell forever. But because through Lord Jesus Christ, you got saved from the eternal lake of fire. Let's look at Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. The Bible says all liars. And I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure that you and I are liars. Yeah. At least we lie once in our life. You know, it's funny. When we went door knocking, we said, we're including this group. And then the gentleman goes, yeah, I lied. I lied once in my life. <laughs> but at least he admitted that he's a liar, right? You know, probably they think this lie is like a big, huge lie. But hey, you know, any lie is a lie, right? You know, if, if you know, sister over here goes, you know, asks a question, right? Two plus two is four, right? And then she answers, you know, seven. I'm like, hey, you're right, you know. I mean, I'm lying to her, right? I mean, she's wrong, right? So all liars, let's go back to the verse. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Again, think about it. You'll be burning in there forever. You know, second death is separation from Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal separation, right? You have your first death and second death, right? For those who reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then you will experience second death. And obviously, that's the death that you do not want to experience. Because no. that's eternal. Right. You'll be burning in hell forever. Then, if you knew you were a sinner, if you realized that if you don't solve your sin problem, that you're going to burn in hell, that's a good thing. Now you need to get saved for sure. Then, then how do you get saved afterwards? Okay, I know I'm a sinner on my way to hell. I don't want to burn in hell. If I don't solve my sin problem, I'm going to burn in hell forever. Can I solve my own sin problem? Answer is no. Right? Your good works, good deeds, money to charity, you know, any you know, special feelings will never get you to heaven. Right? Because a lot of people think that you know, I saw Jesus in my dream. You know? That's not Jesus you saw in your dream. 
you saw the devil in your dream, Amen. right? That's After the Bible's completed, you know, you don't need to seek Jesus Christ's, you know, vision in your dreams, right? right? You have a proof here in the Word of God. And obviously, when people don't divide the truth, right? right? Rightly dividing the Word of God, which is dispensationalism, people will go crazy. Yes. Then, if you know that, what do you do? Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And this is some, you know, this is, they call it Romans Road, you know, salvation plan. It's good for you to at least be aware of it because if someone were to ask you, hey, I want to experience the first love that you have, right? I want to go to heaven, and I want to know for sure. I want to get saved. Then at least you could share these verses. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you and I, yet sinners, right, on the way to hell. So what did God do? He sent his begotten son, Jesus Christ, and died for all of our sins on the cross shedding his precious blood. Let's look at verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Then through the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins can be washed away once and for all. You and I didn't have to do anything, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, you don't have to come to church to get saved. Right? You don't have to like, study the word of God to be saved. You don't have to like, become a scholar to be saved. You just have to know at one point in your life that I'm a sinner on my way to hell and I need a savior to save me from hell. Then if you know that Jesus Christ came down from heaven, died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, then what do you have to do? God has a couple of things, right? Let's go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Acts 17, verse 31. My verses got mixed up. 30, 30, 30, right there, right before. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Then you got to repent. You know, this repentance just means that, you know, you recognize that you're a sinner on your way to hell, and you have, you're willing to turn from your ways and turn to God. It's just your mindset. Right? It's like, you know what? I can't save myself. Nope. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can. You're putting your trust on him to save you from hell. Then with that repenting heart, then you go to Romans chapter 10. You know, this is the final step. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty quick. That's why you could lead a soul in a few minutes. Yeah. Right? If they already know that they're a sinner on their way to hell, you could skip the first half. Yeah. And then you go straight to the point. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And through the word of God, through this incorruptible word of God, you can get saved. How? By confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Lord means God. Yes. And Bible says God was manifest in the flesh, according to 1 Timothy 3.16. Yes. And that's Jesus Christ. Yes. Then we know that Jesus Christ is God, who yes. died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, and with repenting heart, you receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then Bible says you have eternal yeah. life. You, you know, you, did you have to do anything? No. 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 I mean, for by grace are you saved through faith. And then not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast, according to Ephesians yeah. 2, 8 and 9. You and I don't have to do anything. That's why salvation is perfect. Because perfect person died for us. Perfect person is giving us this eternal life. Then when you doubt your salvation, you're doubting God, right? When he says you're saved once and for all. Simple question, even a little child can answer. How many times did Jesus Christ die for you? Once. 
How many times do you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior according to the word of God to get saved? Once. Then, if you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, why do you worry? Right? Why do you even have to doubt? Right. You're, you have something that you could hang on to, which is the perfect word of God. The I mean, Bible says, heaven and earth shall will pass away, but my word, word shall not pass away. Amen. In Matthew 24, 35. The word of God is there forever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Then, if word of God is true, you accept the Christ, your Lord and Savior, then you're going to heaven forever. Amen. I mean, that's what faith is all about, right? If you have to see it to believe, why do you need faith? That's right. Yeah? You don't need to be here. I don't need to be here. You know, we'll just go to some convention, science convention, even though they have faith too. Faith in their evolution, right? I mean, you need, you need, you need huge faith to believe that you know, something came from something like, 500 million years ago. That's yeah, and uh, it's determining, determining age of certain bones, you know. I'm pretty sure if I eat like chicken and then leftover bones and then let them get carbon tested, probably it's going to come out as 25 million years ago. You know, even though I ate it, you know, the day uh, probably chicken was, you know, made into food like only like a, you know, a few weeks ago, right? right? So, you know, we have more sure word of prophecy which is the word of God. Then, final question is to you, right? And here, people here and people listening when it comes to salvation. Knowing all this, right? Not because you repeat it after someone in a prayer because you're feeling good, right? right. Because that's very deceiving. That's what the devil will do. Yes. I mean, everybody's jumping up and down. There's like some, you know, I guess music that's playing, you know, determining your mood, right? Yeah. And then you don't even know what you're doing, like when right. people are high, and then you're like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's receive Christ, you know? And then you're crying your eyes out, and you're bawling. But ball. afterwards, you don't know what happened, right? right. And we're not talking about that. Just through the pure, perfect word of God, yes. you know, you're a sinner on your way to hell. You believe that Jesus died for your sins. You believe he is God. His blood can wash away your sins. Yeah. Knowing this with repenting heart, I mean, have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? It's not for your head. No, a lot of people know it in their head, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because, you know, this gospel of Jesus Christ, because of commercialization of media and, you know, all the social media and TV, almost everyone knows now, right? But do you actually believe it in your heart? That is the real question. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So people believe in vain. A lot of people just know it in their head, but they don't know it in their heart. That's why, you know, we ask this question, right? If you were to die right now, do you know for sure 100% you go to heaven? How did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because if you only believe it in your head, you really won't have, you know, assurance, right? Because, mm, yeah, 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 I think I did, you know. But, you know, you ask, where's Jesus Christ right now, right? You know, don't everybody answer it once, right? Like, where's, where's, where's Jesus Christ? First answer, a lot of time, he's in heaven, right? He's in heaven. But where should he be, right? Especially if, you're, if you say you're in the body of Christ, right? If you're one body with the Lord Jesus Christ, as he's the head of the body and the, all the saved brethren are, you know, his body. He's the head of the body. Then where should you be? Where he should be, right? He should be in your heart yeah. as your Lord and Savior, right? That's where big difference is. People have him in their head, in vain. But people who truly are saved accepted him in their heart as their Lord and Savior. So if you were asked that question, you shouldn't be offended. And if you can't answer that question, then just re-examine and do it again from the bottom of your heart. Uh, I, I don't know. You know. I thought he was just everywhere. Now, devils say he's everywhere, too. Devils say he's up there, too, right? 
And are the devil and angel, his angels going to go to heaven? No. The Bible says they're going to burn an eternal lake of fire. And that's how the devil wants to deceive you. Then, if you didn't know that, hey, you know, he's in your heart as your Lord and Savior, again, it comes back to you, you didn't accept him in the first place, or you're so backslidden, you know, living in sin, so you don't know, right? Then it's time for you to make sure. How do you make sure? By accepting him in your heart as your Lord and Savior and knowing that once and for all. I always you know, tell people, would you want to take chance? You think you did, but there's a possibility that one in a gazillion zeros that you could burn in hell forever. Because that gazillion means nothing compared to eternity. Yeah, right? You could be in hell for a gazillion years and you're okay. No. Once you're in hell, it's forever, right? Yeah. I mean, it's 1,000 years, 2,000 years, 10,000, you know, 100,000, million, billion, you know, trillion, whatever you name it. Once you're in there, you can never come out. Then it might make you think twice. Do I want to burn in this place for not just a few years, but for all eternity? You sh I mean, if you say, I don't care, hey, you know, shame on you. I mean, you're going to face the judgment. But many people who actually have a conscience, like, you know what? I do not want to burn in hell for eternity, and I don't want to take that chance, right? I might have accepted him, but, man, I don't remember. I don't have assurance, right? You know, maybe I was high, you know, with all those Christian music or everything, feelings going on. So maybe through the Word of God, you know what? For sure, with the word of God, now I want to get saved, right? Then you can accept him knowing all this as your Lord and Savior and know for sure that you could go to heaven. I mean, wouldn't it be great? I mean, that's the greatest joy, right? Yeah. That's what, where I keep on reminding and I'm going back to the day I got saved. Man, I don't have to burn in hell, not even for a second. Whatever I do in the future, I'm still going to go to heaven. Man, that's a joy. I mean, that's, that's, that, make, that puts a smile on your face, right? I mean, if, even if you're going through the worst day of your life, you know, you go back to that first love when you accept that Christ, your Lord and Savior, man, Lord, save me from hell for eternity. He came into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Wow. Man, that's a true love. Man. That's, a, that's why it's called first love, because that day you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that day you had that joy of salvation, and that day you truly accepted and received Christ's love once and for all. Then if you did not accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't have that assurance, and this is an opportunity, right? We do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. We do not know what's going to happen five minutes from now, even a minute from now. The Bible says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We have no guarantee of waking up tomorrow morning. Then, before that, you have to make sure that you know where you're going after you die. At this moment then, every head bowed, every eye closed, every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's ask each other honest question. Just be honest to yourself, right? At one point in your life, have you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you were a sinner on your way to hell, having repenting heart, believing that his blood can wash away once and for all? If you haven't, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and get saved from hell once and for all, and have that assurance of salvation. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away 
all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You could all open your eyes. I mean, if you truly did it from your heart, then the Bible says you have eternal life. Well, we read that verse, right? First John chapter 5, 11 to 13. He that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. Do you have Jesus Christ Amen. as your Lord and Savior in your heart? The Bible says you have eternal life. It's not me. It's not your uncle. It's not your aunt. It's what the Bible says. Amen. Everybody could come and argue with the Bible. Just tell them, hey, go to the Bible. Okay? Bible says I'm saved once and for all, forever. Don't argue with me. Argue with the word of God. Then if you did that, then you're saved. Simple as that. You know, salvation is so simple that even a little child can get saved. And the Lord died for you and I so that we can get saved easily, right? If someone loved you so much that they died for you, that means that they want you to have an easier way. It's, it's like this. Son committed a murder, and he was supposed to die. And he was sentenced to death. But the mother raised her hand. Judge, I'm going to die for my son. I want to pay for his crime and his sins. Judge accepted it. Does the son have to die again? No, because his mom paid for the sins of him. Why do some people think that you have to pay for your sin again, right? When Christ died for all your sins once and for all, right? Yes. And of course, you know, as you grow in the Word of God, there's more doctrines that you and I have to be aware of, right? Yes. Because first question comes up. So now I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm in the family of God. I'm going to heaven. Amen. But I have my body, right? Flesh. My flesh still commits sin. Yes. Right? What happens? Right? Man, and if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you should be able to answer that question, right? You should be able to answer. You know, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just like loving father and child, if you do commit sin, you've know, you got to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. But if you commit sin and die, does that mean that you're going to go to hell? Never, right? Why? Now we go to a little bit deeper doctrine, right? Now we go to spiritual circumcision, which I, you know, think is one of the best doctrines when it comes to salvation. Your body and soul separated once and for all when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Your body will still commit sin, yes. but your soul cannot sin anymore, no matter what. That's why when I accept that Christ as my Lord and Savior, if you tell me that, hey, you still can't go to hell? I can't. Even if I try to. You don't believe it? Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. I mean, that's what the Bible says. I mean, it's not my opinion. I mean, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And if your final authority is the word of God, there are no ifs and buts. Amen. You just do and follow what the word of God says. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. So now you hear this term, circumcision of Christ. When you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separated forever. Amen. And we do have body, soul, and spirit because we're made in the image of God, which is Trinity. That's why, however a good a person you are, maybe just like that guy who said, I only lied once in my life. I mean, he's already lying, but hey, let's give him benefit of doubt. He only lied once in his life, but his body and soul stuck together, so he's, he's not clean, right? It's, it's dirty just like the person who lied a million times. Because in order for you to go to heaven, you can't have any sin. You've got to be pure, white as snow. 
then how did that happen? When you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separated once and for all. It's just that you reap what you sow. So don't think that, well, I could live like the devil now, you know, because I'm going to heaven. You know what? I mean, how do you pay your first love with that kind of, you know, attitude in the first place, right? Thank you for saving me from hell. Thank you for dying for me. So I'm just going to go out and rob people. You know, I'm just going to live a sinful life. No, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, almost idiotic even asking those questions, right? However, doctrinally, you could be sure that you will never burn in hell when you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then going back to now our message, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, these are the words of Lord Jesus Christ to the seven churches of Asia Minor. And first one is the church of Ephesus. You know? So if we are to divide it, rightly dividing the word of God, you know, dispensationally, it represents the church age of apostles. And prophetically, Christ is speaking to a church in the end times. And historically, you know, of course, it is actual church. You know, it's actual church. And devotionally, you could make it applicable to today's church. Right. So anything devotional, you could make it applicable to our local church today. So if you were to go to, you know, first few verses, you know, Christ is giving them a pat in the back. You know, you've been doing good, you know, church of Ephesus. You know, let's look at verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. So the Lord is giving him credit. You know, he knows their works, labor, patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Even back in those days, you know, they were, they already knew what was wrong with the charismatics. And they're saying, no, no, no to charismatics, right? It's not about the gifts anymore, right? Like, you know, according to Mark 16, 18, like, it's not. So they already knew. And Ephesians did not take those charismatics words for it. They tried it, right? And then they found out that they were lying. They didn't have no apostolic signs, right? And signs are for Jews, right? So signs are for Jews. And it's not for church-age people right now like you and me. And Lord gave him credit for being patient, you know, being intolerant. And they discerned. They had right judgment. I mean, that's a huge compliment from the Lord, right? However, let's go to verse 4. After all those, you know, job well done comments from the Lord, Lord says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And that is the problem when dealing with anything. Anything. You become just a formality person. You become a person who does it for the sake of doing it. You do it because you have to do it, not because you love to do it, because you want to do it. You know, there's a huge difference. When someone goes to work and they go there because they have to go and they have to do it, their performance is so much different than person who goes to work because they love to go to work and they love to do what they do. Your attitude and your Christian walk has become the first. It's all formality now. You come to church, you go to visitation, you do street preaching, but it's not from your heart. It's not the same first love that you had. You just do it as a formality, right? Friday night, I go street preaching because I've been doing it for a while, right? Saturday, I went visitation because we've been doing it for a while, right? I do the instrument because, you know, I, I've been doing it for a while, right? It's, you lost all that first love. It's not from your heart anymore. You just do it because you have to do it. You have become robotic, and you have to check that. Why? Because Christians can lose first love for God, right? And you can lose your first love for your family, for your spouse, for anything, right? Think about it. Do you think that you love your wife and husband just like the first time you met the person? I mean, it's very quiet in here, you know? <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, 
think about it. Just think about it. That's a, that's a question. You know, if Dr. Ruckman talks about this brother, Jacob Chelly, a converted Hindu, whose mission work, you know, went through, I mean, Dr. Ruckman knew about his mission work. He said, love is not something you fall into. You have to work at it. You know, I mean, there's truth to it. You know, love, you have to work at it. Why? Because after the honeymoon time is over, reality hits, right? When you first loved that person, you did not see any faults, literally. You would do anything for that person. But now, after you tie the knot, time passes by. I mean, you see all of their faults now, right? Wow, you know, I mean, I married this person? You know, you're like, oh, I didn't know he had this issues, she had these issues, right? You're introduced to a real person, right? When you're marrying, especially, you know, if you're out of your first love, right? It's almost like a fictitious because you only see the top. You know, I'm sure you've seen some examples, right? Iceberg, you see the top, but on the bottom, it has a huge bunch of rest of the rocks down there, right? And then that's where there's, you know, all the human faults in there, you know? Whether it's emotional faults, you know, physical faults, you know, mental faults, everything's down there. And then you're going to find all these faults and failings. And there's going to be disagreements, right? Arguments, disappointments. Then how are you going to go back to that first love, right? You have to work at it. Just like your regular human relationship between a man and a woman, you know, in the family, you have to work at it. You have to remember that first love. I mean, if you remember that first love about your wife and your husband, there will be less arguments because you will look over their faults. You will treat them because you love them. You won't treat them because of their faults and failures, right? I mean, then... You and I and anybody else, since we all have many faults and failures, we could always get mad at each other, argue with each other. But when you remember that first love, you remember why I loved that person in the first place, right? Why that man and woman were the person that I wanted to spend my life for all, I mean, forever, right? Until death do apart. When you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, remember why you got saved. Remember what he had to do for you. Remember what he has done for you even afterwards, right? I mean, Christ gave you eternal life in heaven. He's the best friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. He's there for you. He's actually inside of you. Amen. He wants what's best for you, right? I mean, wouldn't you want, wouldn't you think that, hey, man, when I remember this first love I have for Lord, and compared to now, I feel ashamed, right? I don't love him like I used to. You know, I don't appreciate him like I used to. I'm not thankful like I'm used to, right? I don't talk to him like I used to, right? When you're in love for the first time, what do you do? You talk and talk and talk, right? Because you want to know more about that person. I mean, don't tell me that you, you just look at each other in the eyes and you're like, that's it. You know, we're going to get married. You know, we're, we're connected forever. No. You talk to each other. You get to know each other. And then you like every word that's coming out of that person's mouth, right? Because you just have that zeal for that person. When was the last time you think you had that same first love that you have for Lord Jesus Christ? When was it? I mean, has it been so long ago you don't even remember anymore? The first love doesn't even ring a bell anymore? I mean, that just tells you that you have been neglecting your first love. That just tells you that you don't have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Psalms 40, verse 2 says, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, 
and establish my goings. Jesus Christ is that first love, right? Jesus Christ is the first love. There are many, many first loves out there, but no one compares to Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to first love. You have to remember Jesus Christ. Then when you start remembering that first love, you have to remember that service, right? Like I mentioned, man, once you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you started doing something for the Lord. Do you remember? Do you remember those times after you got saved, you started doing something for the Lord, right? Not because you had to, not because of formality, because you wanted to, because you loved him. You started witnessing for him, right? Man, wow, I don't, I mean, this joy of salvation isn't only for me. I can't hold it on by myself. I'm going to start telling everybody. I'm going to tell everybody about my first love. My first love, Lord Jesus Christ. And then you start sharing. You know, even if people say no, you go back at it again. Because you remember what the Lord did for you. And you remember those days, right? You're like, man, I'm so happy that I got saved. I'm so happy and joyful that the Lord has given me this opportunity to serve him. Every day was a blessing. Instead of every day being a dreary, weary day for many Christians right now. I mean, all you're worrying about is money. All you're worrying about is work, your relationship, you know. I mean, it's hard. Your health issues, right? And then everything else out there. But you're forgetting about that first love. When you remember that first love, you can't get through anything in your life. Whether it's a financial issues, physical issues, mental issues, you name it. Because the Lord saved you out of those issues and troubles in life. And he said he'll take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Then you're like, wow, why have I forgotten that first love? I could have had a better Christian life all these years. I could have been more joyful all these years. Man, that joy of salvation is true. But many have forgotten the first love just like Church of Ephesus. And can you honestly say you and I are better than Church of Ephesus? I mean, Lord, comment, I mean, compliment him for what? Works, labor, and patience. I mean, do you have those? Probably not. Not even close. Even them lost first love. That means that you and I could easily have lost our first love long, long time ago. Right. That's why you have to remember, Right? You have to remember your first love and recognize that you have left the first love. That's why, you know, let's go to verse 5. Let's go to verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. And you and I have to repent. Yeah? We have to recognize what we've done wrong. We have to recognize that we have left the first love and return to our first love. Love. When you return to your first love, you know, when you return to the Lord Jesus Christ, your Christian walk will be different now. Your, how should I say, you know, your output during each day will be different. Your outlook about your life and the future will be tr truly joyous, right? It's not going to be just saying, oh, even so come Lord Jesus, I can't wait for the day of rapture. You really can't. Because you can't wait to see him. If, quote unquote, right, this man and woman, they really love each other, first love, but they haven't seen each other, but they know that they're going to see each other again, maybe a year from now, don't you think that they'll be waiting for the other every single day and get more excited as the day approaches? I mean, imagine that. Don't you think that we're in the... I mean, you, should, you and I should be more excited as time passes by that we're getting closer, right, to the Lord, right? Lord's return. I mean, then you should be, like, living your life, remembering that first love. Remember when you got saved. Remember how you served the Lord. And remember what kind of relationship you have with the Lord. 
if you've been far away, like the prodigal son, just like the prodigal son, you have to come back. You have to repent, get right with the Lord. Because if you do not, then what's going to happen? You're going to lose your testimony. You're not going to burn in hell, right? But you're going to lose your testimony, and you're going to lose your rewards. But you don't do that for that. You do it because Christ died for you, because he gave you eternal life. He's the love of your life, right? When someone asks you, who's your valentine, right? You know, Lord Jesus Christ is your true valentine, right? You know, he is. And then afterwards, like your spouses, you know, someone else, right? But Lord Jesus Christ should be the valentine for you and I. In Jesus, yeah, right? Right? You know, I almost ended with that prayer, right? You know, but remember, remember, right? Just like what the verse says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Remember your first love. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for saving us from hell, and thank you for giving us eternal life. But Lord God, because of our sinful ways and weakness and whatever it is, we have forgotten the first love. That first love, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, the day we got saved, the joy we had, thinking about, you know, this eternal life that we have now and the love that we have for lost souls out there. Lord God, help us to remember our first love and get right with you, Lord, and live each day with first love, Lord God, with more zeal, for lost souls out there with more zeal to do your work and with more love to give to you, Lord God. I pray that you'll be with everyone and those who are listening, Lord. Again, if they're not sure where they're going, I pray that they'll get that right first, Lord. I pray that you'll bless everyone during this, you know, crazy times. Protect them, Lord. Protect us, Lord. And I pray that we, we will keep great testimony for you, Lord. We want to be a faithful servant, Lord. Bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.